a combustion engine, an electric motor, batteries, fuel inlet and an electric socket. We saw this in Toyota Prius plug-in hybrid, but GM offers a somewhat different approach. Opel Ampera is the European Chevy Volt. I waited for this car many years, not just me. An electric car with a petrol range extender which uses up about a liter of gas per 100 kilometers? I mean, who wouldn't want one? Okay, so a couple of words how this works. Uh, we've got uh, an electric module here, electric motor somewhere down there, a petrol range extender here and battery somewhere in the back. So what happens is that batteries power the electric motor until they're depleted. Then the uh, range extender engine comes on and it powers, it acts as a generator. So it powers the electric motor, which then powers the wheels. So it's not like a traditional car, it's more like a diesel locomotive. Only this is not the diesel, this is a petrol engine. And all this, in theory, it uh, sounds brilliant, right? I mean, uh, you know, you're using uh, just a tiny wee bit of fuel, you're going on electric and... Uh, hey, you know, why not? Uh, I'd be ready to pay almost 43,000 euros for this. But um, it's not as good as it sounds. Let's start with the boot, which uh, has a volume of just 300 liters. A previous plug-in hybrid has 443 liters and an Opel Astra hatchback is 370 liters. In the back there is a place for two people because under this tunnel is the battery. Prius and Astra can carry up to five people, Ampere only four. But then how often do we carry three people in the back, right? In the front the cockpit looks okay. On the two futuristic displays there's plenty of information about the charge level, fuel consumption, driving style and so on. Based on this data we can drive very economically, but the drivers behind us will want to kill us and all the trees we saved. I've driven electric cars before so I'm not surprised that the Ampera is also quite torquey. What really surprised me is how fast this car is uh, even in electric mode. It can go way above 100 kilometers per hour and that's in normal mode not sports or anything else. Uh, speaking of modes uh, we've got uh, four here. There is normal, sport, mountain and energy hold. Normal is uh, what we drive in every day. This is uh, energy going from the battery and when the battery runs out the um, generator or a range extender kicks in. Um, sport, the throttle response is sharper. Throttle, it's, it's an electric car. Well, but anyway, you get the point. Uh, mountain, um, the car regenerates or stores a bit more energy uh, to be used uh, when you have to climb hills. And then there is the uh, energy hold mode. Energy hold mode is um, for you to drive with the range extender while conserving energy in the battery so that you can use the battery and drive in electric mode, uh, let's say in electric vehicle only zones. The car's aerodynamics are also optimized. Unfortunately, this means every speed bump is an annoyance and I've got to go over 10 of these before I leave my residential area. The manufacturer claims um, this car will do 40 to 80 kilometers in electric mode. That's more or less enough to drive to work and on the way drop your kids to school, spouse to work, then in the afternoon pick them all up and uh, you know maybe do some shopping. Uh, after the battery runs out uh, you have to uh, plug the car in for six hours or you can use the range extender. And this brings us to a rather important subject which is uh, fuel consumption on this car. The manufacturer claims this will do a combined weighed average of 1.2 liters per 100 kilometers. Now, um, as I'm filming this, uh, GM hasn't answered my question about the weighed something methodology, but I did my own calculation and uh, as far as I can tell, this means that for every 100 kilometers that I drive, I would have to do about 70 or 80 kilometers in electric mode and the remaining 20 or 30 in um, range extender petrol mode. This would probably give me a weighed average of about 1.2 liters per 100 kilometers. A couple of days ago uh, on the weekend I drove this car for about 500 kilometers outside of town obviously. Uh, so the battery ran out after 40, 40 something kilometers and uh, my average fuel consumption with uh, 
normal driving like everyone else, you know, not blocking traffic, that was above six liters per 100 kilometers. If I drove really slowly, really carefully, I would probably do about five liters per 100 kilometers. I agree the Ampera will spend most of its time in the city where it's usually possible to charge the car. Even if I manage the only around 45 kilometers on a single charge, this is enough for my daily commute. The problem is the price because for one Ampera I could buy three Opel Astras or almost two normal Priuses or a Prius plug-in hybrid and I'd still have enough money left to buy myself a Skoda City Go as a second car. Assuming I will drive this car 50 kilometers every day in electric mode and it costs about a fifth to charge this car than what it costs to fill it up with petrol, even then this car would start paying off compared to the Astra um, in about 15 years if I get uh, some sort of a eco uh, incentive uh, or uh, maybe um, you know a tax exemption or uh, you know or I don't have to pay congestion charges then maybe it will go down to seven or eight years but that's still a huge huge difference for many years we've been hearing that oil is going to run out one day and we'll all have to drive electric cars and well the vault here this is at an early stage of this mobile electrification let's call it but uh, it's an early stage which is good enough for enthusiasts and you know guys who like gadgets but in my opinion the drivetrain here the drivetrain that GM offers us with the uh, Chevy Volt or Opel Ampera uh, it's not a real alternative I mean it's not a real alternative for the combustion engine not just yet